Oh, what's going on, everybody? Michael Silva here. Today, we're going to be taking a peek behind the curtain of this stock market rally on today's stock market brief. It's going to be very quick episode today. These are the episodes where we navigate the financial markets through the lens of technical and intermarket analysis. If you haven't done so already, make sure to sub to the channel and hit that thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and get into today's episode. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're going to start here looking at how the market performed. Overall, a flat day. Technology or the NASDAQ composite did lead the way. The NASDAQ 100 was up 0.93%, uh, and the NASDAQ composite was up almost a percent there too as well. And you can see here, consumer discretionary and technology were the two leading sectors. So we're getting a little bit more of a bid in the mega cap names. You can see over here, consumer stable still remains up there, but it was a mixed board overall. Energy took the largest hit. This is going to be an important one to pay attention to because of the big hit on a very economic sensitive commodity. And that is oil. What is oil sniffing out here? Is it a recession that oil is sniffing out? I mean, 4% move to the downside is nothing to just kind of skip over and laugh at. That is a large move in this commodity. Now, we did hit our target of that 200-day moving average. We talked about the bear flag that was forming and when it broke down, and that was the target area. So we'll see here if um, oil is going to catch a potential bid, a little bit of relief here in some energy names and that commodity as well. Now, the S&P 500 has been on a nice rally, including these last two days. It's kind of pressed itself higher. But when you take a look at equal weight, to give it a good idea of breath, you can actually see equal weight has not recaptured its 50-day moving average. And it's actually been down here, you can see for the last couple of days, where the S&P 500, SPX, mainly driven by the mega cap, the magnificent seven names, has been rising up a little bit further. So weakening breath, few names bringing the market up a little bit higher. We know that when there is weakening breath through a period of time and the market presses higher, that's not good for the overall market. What else is taking place? Well, copper took a big hit. Copper is also an economic sensitive, that's why they call it Dr. Copper, um, commodity. And this one, you can actually see divergences build throughout time, both positive and negative, that gave insights into potential falls in the S&P 500. The most recent was on this big rally over here in the S&P 500. You can see copper was rather flatlining, and then we went through a 10% correction before this monster rip. And what's even crazier here, if you pay really close attention, look at the monster rip, how you have um, just kind of matching lows right through here on the price of copper. But whereas you had the S&P 500 way up here and coming all the way down into this range. So copper started flattening out a little bit while uh, the S&P 500 was rising. Then copper started catching a bid. And guess what? Uh, S&P 500 followed. The reason why I'm showing you this now is because, well, yes, it's still on a move higher, but today marks a day where it was a pretty significant downside candle. So are we going to see copper start pulling back down? And is that going to drag uh, um, eventually the S&P 500 alongside of it? You can see the dollar has also been up these last three trading days, two trading days. Now it's up a little bit more. And the S&P 500 is kind of following suit. And we know that there is a pretty strong negative correlation throughout history here in the dollar. And if you're, if you're new here and you don't recognize that, well, let me show it to you. You can see over here the October top in the dollar. Well, that was actually the October bottom in the S&P 500. And as we move down in the dollar, the S&P 500 rallied higher. And you can see when the dollar found its bottom over here, when everyone said the dollar was dead. Guess what? The S&P 500 went through its correction. You can see these last few trading days over here. The dollar took a big hit to the downside, really propelling the move in the S&P 500. But it was alongside of another important asset from an intermarket standpoint, and that is the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield is still in this bullish channel, seeing a lot of volatility overall here, as you can see. I don't have a chart of the move index, but you. But if you do pull up the chart of the move index, which is bond volatility, um, it is it is rather high still, and we're seeing that here in this midst of all this chop. So, yep, it was uh, came down to the lower end of the channel. We bounced up a little bit. Now we're back to the lower end of the channel. You can see we're still in a, um, playing out that negative divergence in the price momentum oscillator over here, and it's kind of getting the spread, meaning that hey, it's very possible that we can start breaking down. Look for a back test. Neither it's a, a fake out to move higher, um, or potentially we bounce up from this way, and then we come back down, and people will start calling it a head and shoulders topping pattern on the 10-year yield. And you can look at this a couple of ways, right? Like when, when it falls down, you'd be like, that could be good for growth stocks, um, right? Because you've seen this kind of correlation take place as the 10-year yield has been falling, as mega caps names have been going good. However, you look at an oil drop, okay? And then you're seeing, uh, you might look at this and say, oh, the 10-year yield is dropping. That could actually mean that growth is declining, which could be 
a potentially a bad sign, especially when you start looking at like the TLT, if the TLT is outperforming the S&P 500. Look at the last four trading days over here, all over the place as we, we ripped higher, we came way back down, we ripped right back up. So there's just a lot of volatility right now in these overall markets. And if I show you this on the yield curve, you can see the 10 year minus two year yield curve when this went into that inverted state over here, which means below zero, inverted state right now we're at minus 33 basis points you can see here as this goes deeper into inversion it actually propels the S&P 500 up now I'll tell you one thing when the with this will uninvert at some point and is that going to be good for the S&P 500 well history suggests it's not the greatest thing after an uh, after it inverts for a while and it uninverts. It's not typically a good sign. So it gives us caution. Doesn't mean you have to make any immediate decisions. But as it stands right now, we're seeing the deeper this inverts, the S&P 500 rallies. The deeper it inverts, S&P 500 rallies. Deeper it inverts, S&P 500 rallies. Okay, but what happens when it starts uninverting, as we've seen right here. Well, the S&P 500 went through a 10% correction. And now what are we seeing? Well, the <laughs> U curve is inverting deeper, right? And what's it doing with the S&P 500? Now, we already know that this is going to uninvert at some point. We don't know when that's going to be. But does that mean that this rally will get hit and clobbered back down to the downside? Well, we need to be aware of that. And we talked about on last episode of the Stock Market Brief show of what were the key levels to watch for in the price action that it needs to hold in order to feel a little bit more confident that we're building out a higher high and a higher low. Another thing to pay attention to here is smart money versus dumb money. Uh, this is one that I show every once in a while. It's basically looking at high yield and the S&P 500 beneath us. And the reason why I like using this tool is because sometimes it gives us insight into potential turning points in the market. And I'm looking at an hourly time frame because I look to look at smaller divergences. Now, the most recent positive divergence was actually catching this market bottom. And you can see we had a low and a higher low and high yield. And this is considered the smart money. So smart money is bidding up. Dumb money was obviously coming down right here, giving us that positive divergence. And what happened? We saw that rip to the upside. Now, on a very shorter time frame, you can see that actually high yield is putting in a lower high while the SPY is putting in a higher high. So smart money is actually going down while dumb money is kind of pressing forward. Now, if this, this divergence is in currently a building state, meaning that if HYG, if this is a flag and this breaks out back above this 7450, and you know, SPY is still up in this area, well, this divergence is, is no longer valid at that point, okay? But if it even comes up a little bit, and maybe it's a matching high, and this still presses up to say 440, that could still very well be a negative divergence that is currently building within this smart money, dumb money um, little look. And this, if, I, if you go back through history, I've used this tool many times. So this is dating back to the prior year um, where you can see just multiple you know, negative divergences in red, where we had positive divergences. And you can see a little, um, sorry, that was a negative divergence, positive divergence here, where you can see smart money was putting in a higher higher high or higher low dumb money was putting in a lower low right there to matching low and we saw those rips so uh it's something that i look at on occasion and right now i'm pointing it out just because there is a subtle divergence another thing to look at is the old fool indicator this is taking the nasdaq composite dividing it into the total put to call ratio and applying two in uh breath indicators here which is uh breath uh, emas which are um, the 21 and 50. And this is a very lagging indicator, but it does identify changes in trend quite well. The most recent bullish crossover was within this area. We saw a crossover right around here. And that was right around all this chop as price action from an absolute standpoint was coiling up, right? Expansion leads to contraction. Contraction got very tight. The bullish uh, signal was on and it led us all the way up into right around here, our last bearish crossover, which led the um, kind of the, the, the decline here. As you can see, we see big rallies within this boom, and we're still seeing a big rally, and we still haven't actually had that bullish crossover as of yet, okay? So it would be nicer to see, obviously, the put-to-call ratio, um, sorry, the NASDAQ composite divided into the put-to-call ratio line start ticking up, and the green line to get back above 
that blue line right there indicating that it could be very well potential change in trend back up to the upside. I'm going to close off here looking at the SPX and I put some levels on here. I have the daily expected moves um, above us and below us. As it stands right now, we're kind of just pressing higher. Not much of a movement overall. We're above that five-day moving average, which is down here. The gamma flip line is over here at 43.40 as it stands. So right now we're in positive gamma territory. That means dealers look to sell the rips and buy the dips, right? So that's, that's good to know. That means volatility is typically suppressed and then when volatility or when we're below the gamma flip level if we really break by it which we're not far from it this is when dealers will sell into selling and buy into buying creating much more volatile price swings um, local support is over here at 43.75 local resistance and a big um, gamma call wall is at 4400 so you know, if this market wants to go up a little bit higher, right, pay very close attention to the upper daily expected move at 4,496 and uh, 4,496 cents, that is. And then the major call wall up here at 4,400, which can act as a local area of resistance to pay very close attention to. Now, there's not much underneath this um, gamma exposure level of 4,370 and 4,375. So if we do start getting below this kind of low, that does open the door to the lower daily expected move there. That's all I got for you in today's episode, everybody. Buddy. Hope it helped out. Hope, hope it gives you some insight into the overall markets that you can use as tools later down the road. See you later.